Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Well, we made it back home finally, and my phone is almost dead. Come on, show it. There it goes, 7%. Woo. All right, so we got it film before it dies, and I can plug it in and let it charge up for a while. Uh, yeah, long day. <clears throat> so we're going to be reading out of an extremely important and amazing verse Revelation 5 6 lo in the midst of the throne stood a lamb as it had been slain the whole verse says and I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth this is interesting so did he see a lamb with its feet tied together and its throat cut? Did he see a lamb that was butchered and the parts separated like the law states for the... No, he saw Jesus Christ. But see, Jesus has his scar still. That's why he said it is as if it had been slain, as though it had been slain. Jesus still has his scars. So let's read this in context. This is, Revelation 5 is actually a very important chapter too. The scroll and the lamb. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne. This is verse 1. A scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. We don't know what's on the scroll. Right now, the conclusion most people come to is that it is the title deed to creation, or at least to the earth. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to even look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and in, in of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain. Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father, so he's in the midst of the throne. And he heads his church, so it's no surprise he's in the midst of the elders. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. That's the seven spirits of the seven churches. Verse 7, Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And the part one that sits on the throne is God, the Ancient of Days. Verse 8, Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Your prayers are burned like incense in heaven. Your prayers put off an aroma in heaven. See, what we do here correlates to something over there. We don't understand it fully yet. But evidently it's important. Verse 9, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked. This is, this is very interesting, this verse. I've done a bunch of videos on this verse. Then I looked, John looks. He never said he saw anything. He looked and he heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Now, a lot of people say that's angels. Well, in Hebrews, it says in the general assembly of the throne room, it's an innumerable company of angels. This is a number. This is a hundred million plus a couple of million. Some people say three million. The thousands and thousands, three million. Some say it's six million. So this is just over a hundred million. Well, that's not innumerable. You can count that. But notice he never saw them. Now, when you go to uh, uh, Daniel chapter seven, Daniel saw the group, but of course he didn't know who they were and didn't elaborate on them. He, he saw this same group. Because he mentions the same number, but he never, never, he never knew who they were. He saw them, didn't talk about it anymore. He didn't recognize who they were. He didn't know, most likely, didn't know about the church. <laughs> and so it may be he witnessed the church in heaven. 
I think this is the church. Now, because now another thing is the voice of many angels. Jesus said they shall be like angels. Talking about us. Well, if you have a voice of an angel, you're like an angel, aren't you? And they are around the throne, the living creatures and the elders. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. And the child was caught up to the throne room of God. And the child was harpazoed to the throne room of God. You can go look at yourself and see. Notice in that same verse, two different Greek words are used for child. One means son, and the other one means daughters and sons. First one is Jesus, second one is us. I think this is us right here. And they are saying with a loud voice, verse 12, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, so he could hear this in heaven, all the creatures, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. How interesting. All the creatures... In heaven, on the earth, under the earth, and in the ocean. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. This is an amazing chapter. There's lots here. Why would our exalted Lord appear in his wounds in glory? Amazing. Somebody else sees that too. See, I can't hardly find anybody that, I don't think I found anybody yet that talks about that Jesus still has his scars. Now, we know he does because after he rose and he appeared, Mary didn't recognize him. Why didn't she recognize him? She literally had just seen him. Why didn't she recognize him? Because when, when a body, after receiving such a horrible beating and wounds, when a body dies, everything swells up and they can become completely disfigured in, in incredible ways, even after death. Sometimes the stuff will draw, the skin will draw back from them too and make them look worse than what they are <laughs> or pull them open. So she supposed he was the gardener. She didn't recognize her own Lord. It wasn't because he changed. He was in the same body. He just didn't look the same because of his wounds. He, the Bible says that he was, uh, his, his image was marred beyond any human. So it should be no surprise that he still wears his scars. Those are his, that's his badge of honor. That's his glory. It's a reminder to everybody that sees him what he did. The two people on the road to Aramaeus didn't recognize him. It wasn't until he spoke and prayed that they recognized him. The upper room, approximately 120 people sitting in the room hiding, doors locked, windows closed and locked. He walks right through the door, just through the wall. Peace be to you. None of them recognized him. Doubting Thomas, why did he doubt? He didn't recognize him. It wasn't until he put his finger through the holes in his wrists and shoved his, his hand up inside his ribcage that he, that he realized that really was him. They didn't recognize him. None of them did. So I love that this devotion starts like this because evidently somebody else saw this too at some point in history. I'm glad to find at least one person. Why should our exalted Lord appear in his wounds in glory? See, this is one of the things, whenever you go look at the Shroud of Turin and they show that little statue, it's like, that guy doesn't have the same wounds Christ has. The Bible describes something much more horrific. This guy looks like he walked through a bunch of sticker bushes and got himself some little cuts. Jesus was disfigured beyond human, beyond any human form. He looked alien. It's, it, the scriptures in the Old Testament talk about it. Quite, we covered them recently, quite specifically. So yeah, he still has his wounds. Why should our exalted Lord appear in his wounds in glory? The wounds of Jesus are his glories. His, see, I've been talking about this for years. I, I love that this has come up now. The wounds of Jesus are his glories, his jewels, his sacred ornaments. To the eye of the believer, Jesus is passing fair because he is white and ruddy, white with innocence and ruddy with his own blood. We see him as the lily of matchless purity, the lily of the valley, and as the rose crimson with his own gore, the rose of Sharon. Christ is lovely upon Olivet and Tabor, and by the sea, but oh, there never was such a matchless Christ as he that did hang upon the cross. See, it's these scars that make him beautiful. 
not because of the scars, but because of what they represent. The sacrifice that was made that brought them on. That's what makes them beautiful. And him and his wounds is beautiful because of what he did and why he did it. There we behold all his beauties in perfection, all his attributes developed, all his love drawn out, all his character expressed. Beloved, the wounds of Jesus are far more fair in our eyes than all the splendor and pomp of kings. The thorny crown is more than an imperial diadem. Ooh, oh, my phone's really getting bad. Battery power, 5%. Can't read it. Let's turn that up a little bit. Hopefully, we can finish. Go away. There we go. Um, the thorny crown is more than an imperial diadem. It is true that he bears not now the scepter of reed, but there was a glory in, in it that never flashed from scepter of gold. Jesus wears the appearance of a slain lamb as his court dress, in which he wooed our souls and redeemed them by his complete atonement key word complete nor are these only the ornaments of christ they are the trophies of his love and of his victory he has divided the spoil with the strong he has redeemed for himself a great multitude whom no man can number that would be the great multitude in uh, this after the sixth seal in chapter 7 of revelation and these scars are the memorials of the fight Ah, if Christ thus loves to retain the thought of his sufferings for his people, how precious should his wounds be to us. When you see him, in the day that we're finally taken up, when you see him, look for the scar he took for you. Behold, how every wound of his a precious balm distills, which heals the scars that sin has made, and cures all mortal ills. Those wounds are mouths that preach his grace, the ensigns of his love, the seals of our expected bliss in paradise above. I'm going to keep this short and sweet, guys, because my phone's about to die. It's going down quick. Lord, thank you for, first of all, this vindication. Uh, you showed me this years ago when I started this ministry in 2019. You showed me this, and I've been sharing it ever since. And it was such a revelation to see that you still carry those scars. And it makes so much of other things, other instances and, and, and descriptions make sense. What's described about your, your image in the Old Testament and why people didn't recognize you in the New after you were resurrected. They, they, they didn't know because your wounds made you ghastly. So that the random person would even to pay a second look to you. But those that loved you didn't recognize you because you still wear your wounds. And so the images we put up today are nice, but that's not what you look like. And so, Lord, I've been trying to prepare people so that when they do see you, that they see those wounds and they immediately know why you have them, why you carry them, because they are your glory. Lord, thank you for the vindication of this devotion, that I'm not the only one that sees this. I tend to believe this is special revelation, not that I'm special, but that those who want to know more, you'll show it to them. And so while reading your word, you are revealing yourself. And it is amazing and it is beautiful. And Lord, I, I know my scar is on the bottom of your foot because I'm not worthy of that scar that you took for me. And so if it's down there where nobody can see it, that's fine. But I know you have a scar that has my name on it. And I'm thankful that you took that. Because if you didn't, I wouldn't have salvation. I wouldn't have my sins forgiven. And I, I only shed my tears because I know how important it is. And how important it is to me. And how important it is to you. And how important it should be to all of us. And today, people have lost that. They've forgotten that. They've looked away from that because I guess it's too terrible for them to comprehend. But Lord, may we never look away, but instead look you right in the eyes. And thank you for dying for us, for paying our, paying our sin debt so that we may reside in heaven with you. Come quickly, Lord. I hate to cut this short, Lord, but my phone is dying. I know it'll keep going as long as you want it to keep going, but Lord, 
what else can I say? Thank you for this precious gift. Thank you for what you did on the cross. Thank you for coming to us individually and offering it to us. The way you wooed me, 10 days, I could not take my eyes off that Bible until I opened it up. I couldn't sleep. And when I started reading, I couldn't stop. And in the book of Matthew, when I read about your crucifixion, I knelt down. Lord, I believe. I believe. That changed everything in my life and has sent me down a completely different direction than where I was currently headed. And Lord, I am glad you came and got me. And throwing in that baby dove landing on my right shoulder was just icing on the cake. Why that happened, I don't know. But that was really strange that that happened. But anyway, that's my testimony. And Lord, I thank you for it. And I thank you for your testimony because it is your testimony that tells the world you are Lord. This show is under your control and things will go according to your will and your judgment only. The world is, is oblivious to what's about to happen. But those of us that believe, we know because your word tells us and we believe it. Lord, may we believe it to the fullest and may we constantly be eagerly expecting you and waiting for the day you arrive. And Lord, may you come quickly, quicker than quick because the days are evil. People are losing it. And quite a few innocents are getting caught in the crossfire. Bless you, Lord. I thank you for all this wonderful grace you show us and these mercies. And I thank you for this free gift. And on behalf of my brothers and sisters, Lord, I pray that you open all our eyes and especially our hearts. But open our eyes so we can see, our ears so we can hear, our minds so we can know, and our hearts so we can understand what your word is telling us and what you are telling us through that word. Reveal your secrets to us, Lord, that we may share them with others when the time is right and appropriate to bring them around to your glory. And when we finally get to see you, we can look for that scar. I'm sure you know which ones they are the ones you took for each of us. And they are your glory, Lord. And may you come into your glory because you are worthy. You are more than worthy. In your name, Lord, we pray, amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for evening devotion. I'm gonna keep this quick because my phone's about to die. The Lord, he still wears his scars. And it is a reminder to anyone, anywhere that sees him, what he did and what he is continuing to do, and why he is the one on top. And there's a day coming when all knee will bow. No matter who that person is, no matter where they're located, they will bow, because they will come to the place where they will recognize that's the one. He's the one that died for all the people. He's the one that redeemed the purchased possession. He's the one that showed in the flesh and gave himself as a ransom shed his blood so that we could be saved. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I did not expect this evening devotion to go like this, but it's awesome. I'll see you in the next video.